Okay, so it is recording for those who couldn't make it. First of all, welcome to everyone. It's Diane Atham. Um, if two names, two dies appear, uh, the other one is Nicole. It's just an issue of, of, of how we're logging in. Um, I just wanted to start by saying thank you very much to, to each of you for setting up and, and starting these uh, special interest groups or, or SIGs. It's a, it's a very exciting and an extremely important initiative. Um, and also to say that we recognize that it's an enormous amount of work and we really want to support and facilitate the, the, the SIGs and, and support the conveners as possible. And one of the ideas that came up was to, uh, to put conveners in touch with each other and to, to have this WebEx meeting so that conveners um, may be able to share experiences and tips of, of how they've gone about their special interest group um, and, and to brainstorm ideas and generally to, to try help the, the SIGs be quite active, but with as little um, pain and uh, using as little of your time as possible. Um, so I just to, before kind of getting into the meeting itself, just to say that if you find this engagement today useful, we're very happy to, to set up WebEx chats between the conveners where would be helpful, and or to set up a convener discussion list so that if somebody is encountering some specific challenge or wanting ideas, um, they could engage with um, other conveners. So let me kick off, and because we've lost a bit of time, I'm, I'm going to try to combine the next two items. Um, so introductions and uh, SIG activities. We'll go around uh, SIG by SIG and ask you to very briefly introduce yourself and indicate which uh, SIG you're from. So I'll, I'll sort of direct um, to specific SIGs and, and ask you to, to, um, to introduce yourselves. Um, but, and I don't think you need to give background on the SIG itself. Just I don't think we've got time to do that, but rather you know, introduce yourself and what SIG you're from, but rather just give us a sense of what kind of activities that your SIG is focusing on, and also maybe raise challenges that you're facing. Now we're going to ask Emma Fu to go last, um, the economics of obesity SIG. Her SIG was the first to be established and um, a very active SIG. So we asked her to share some of her experiences and tips that we thought might be particularly helpful. So I just wanted to, to check if everyone's happy with that approach um, and then we'll start um, going around the, the different SIGs. So unless there's any shots of horror or objections, um, then we'll just, we'll just go SIG by SIG. And people to introduce themselves. Okay, so um, maybe, Fern, could I ask you and, and your colleagues to introduce yourselves and the SIG? Um, hi, this is Fern. Alec, do you want to introduce Say hi? Hi, it's Alec Miners here. <laughs> We're from the Health Preference Research SIG. Um, our activities are, we are in the process of scheduling webinars. We have elicited um, uh, contributions in terms of presentation, early research presentation from part members and participants. Uh, we've also asked people to... And which they go you? Health preference research. Ah. Uh, maybe it got lost there. Sorry. Uh, yep, no, that's that's good for to clarify. Uh, we're hoping to also um, put together some organized sessions if they don't fall within the special interest sessions, because there are 
uh, three special interest sessions um, uh, that has have calls for abstracts for um, basil. Um, but we also thought if there are people out there who have health preference research abstracts that they'd like to submit that don't fall within those, there may be nice synergies to put together. Some of the challenges we're having, so we're very early still, the challenges that we're having is where to post. Do we put it in events or do we put it in blog? And does it just sit there and not get pushed out to members or does it get pushed out to members? So we, we put on our first announcement was under the blogs and it didn't seem to get pushed out to anyone. So then we put it on events where we emailed all the members and I individually got all the responses. So they were not posted up and that's not very helpful for discussion. So I've emailed Nicola and or Nicole and I'm hoping that we will figure out this technical glitch. Um, Alec, do you have anything to add? Um, that's pretty thorough. I mean we're hoping like like Fred said, we're we're at the early stages um of organising things and we're speaking to people um within and, and out with of the sort of health environment if you like to try and organise some some various events, but it, there's, there's some things that we will be scheduling in very soon. Thank you. So I'll go back on mute now. Great. Thank you very, very much. Um, okay, could we ask Peter, Peter May, he's still here, if you could introduce your sick. Um, Peter, I think you're on mute. Pete. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on to someone else, um, and maybe I'll go to uh, Pavitra. Pavitra um, is uh, convening a, a SIG that was only approved about a week or two ago. So, Pavitra? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, you want to just quickly you. indicate which um, SIG you're from and... Um, uh, we just got our approval. Our, we are health systems efficiency group and our activities are we should be uploading the internet country database and we also be creating the metadata. And as of now, uh, we are uh, just waiting for our first meeting with uh, Dai and Nicole uh, coming week. In between, we have started uh, inviting uh, more members into our group. We are also organizing ourselves to participate in the uh, uh, Basel Congress uh, with our activities from the SIG. And at the same time, we are also organizing, uh, presenting some study uh, related to our specialty group. So broadly, we are at this stage now, and maybe in the next meeting, we'll be in a better position to update with uh, what activities we, are, we have carried out so far. So this is uh, all about right now, and uh, any of us, are mo uh, any of you are most welcome to spread the message about uh, the approval of this efficiency group and welcome to participate. Great, thanks. Um, I'm Peter May. Can, can you still hear us? Yeah, can you hear me now? Great. Yes, yes. Sorry, I've confused myself. I'm using the phone and WebEx at the same time, and it's just too much um, mid-20th century technology. Um, so, yes, do you want me to go now? Yes, go ahead. Please, please, please. Okay. So, I am uh, in Trinity College Dublin in Ireland, and I co-lead the end-of-life palliative care group with Nikki McCaffrey. Nikki is uh, not able to make the call, so... I'll do all of the talking for us. Um, we have uh, made some initial steps in founding the palliative end of life SIGs. We've had an, an initial group 
um, webinar, which was quite, or meeting, I should say, which was quite successful. We talked, yeah, made some ideas for Basel submissions, got a few people talking about some potential working papers, um, things of that nature. We're planning a first webinar. I'm going to do a webinar in, I think, November, the last I heard. I think that is in with Nicole of the timing, but we should be doing that soon. And um, we have plans for further contributions to um, newsletters and things like that. Um, I'd say the biggest challenge we are facing is probably numbers. I mean, the defining characteristic of economics of end-of-life care is that the activity relative to policy importance is extremely low. So we have more or less everybody we're aware of working in the field as a part of the SIG, but it still leaves us one of the smallest groups on the email that, that went round before this call. So um, I suppose any ideas people, obviously we're hoping Basel will be good for, we'll have some kind of an event there and try to rope a few more members, but any ideas people have for um, raising awareness and increasing membership and footfall would probably be my, my biggest interest from this. Great, thank you very much, Peter. Um, I mean, a, a even for for attracting people because um, we found that sometimes people who join the um, webinar are interested in joining the SIG, so that sometimes helps. Um, Virg, ask you to go. Virg, are you still? Can yep, I'm. I, I've just unmuted myself. Hi everybody, um, my name is Virginia Wiseman, I'm at London School of Hygiene, Tropical Medicine and the Kirby Institute at the University of New South Wales and the co-conveners for health financing, the universal healthcare coverage are uh, Joe Borgie who's also at LSHTM, Edwin Barasso who's at Kemri, the Kenyan Medical Research Institute and also Professor Hasbullah Trabani at the University of Indonesia. And also really important to this group is Manon Hamari, who is at LSHTM, who's a PhD student of mine and has been very, very um, supportive of this thing. We're just getting underway. We have, um, now we've got three people committed to webinars. I think the date has only been confirmed for one, um, late November. Um, and up to this point, it, we've just been communicating by email, actually, <laughs> and that's just not going to be sustainable. Uh, we keep trying to update that email list, so we're we're moving over to to using um, social links. Um, so yeah, just kind of getting moving. There's a bit of momentum now, and really look forward to getting some ideas about. Um, both other activities and also just good ways of communicating with each other. I'm actually about I'm about to go into a meeting, unfortunately, so I'll, I'll hang in there for a little bit longer and then I'll listen to the recording. Thanks a lot. Great, thanks very much, Thank Bert. Thanks very much, Bert. Um, um, Chris? Chris? Hi, can you hear Hi. me? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, sounds good. Hi, my name is Christian Suharlem. Um, I am with the Harvard ASTM School of Public Health here in Boston. Um, and together with Logan Brentel and Steve Fresh, uh, we are the co-conveners for the Immunization Economics SIG. Um, so for the for our SIG, um, right now there's a little bit more of a coordination effort. Um, although we've been um, approved early in the year. Um, there's, we're also juggling between the immunization economics stick and the immunization economics community of practice that we have um, previously uh, started and supported, which is a hun uh, which had 1,100 members uh, from 250 organizations. So there's some um, overlap there there with the IHEA membership um, and. From our internal discussion, we've been thinking about doing a webinar series um, up until um, our the the congress 
in Basel. Uh, and so far, we've been pushing IHEA activities to the community of practice, to the 1,100 members in our community. Um, so the activities from IHEA um, and the deadlines um, we've sent it out, uh, we forwarded it to our community. Um, and tomorrow, a bunch of us will have an immunization economics happy hour in Liverpool with the HSR uh, 2018. Um, and two weeks ago, around 25 people um, met in two weeks uh, in, in Seattle. They're all uh, grantees from Gates Foundation in this area, immunization economics, and many of these um, individuals are part of IHEA, um, including Steve Logan and also David Bashai was there as well. Um, we also had a brainstorming session recently on trying to get potential ideas for webinar, um, special organized session for Basel, and also a pre-Congress session for Basel. So those are the, the things that we have on the timeline that we're uh, planning to move forward with. Um, in terms of funding, we secured funding um, for five memberships. Uh, membership for promising new researchers in the field. So uh, I'll probably would love to reach out to the SIG for uh, early career researchers as well in this area. So we are trying to um, identify promising new researchers in the field, um, particularly looking at immunization economics who are not yet member of IHEA. We would love to support them to join IHEA. And we also secured funding for five individuals to attend the Congress in Basel. So for these, we'll probably try to do an abstract contest or some sort before um, the event um, so that we can identify the five individuals that we are able to fund and support to go to Basel. Um, yeah, so I think that's the update so far. Great. Thanks very much. And it's, it's nice to see potential little linkages across SIGs coming up. So given that you were mentioning the early career research, can I ask James and Julia to go next? Sure. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, so I'm James Buchanan um, at the University of Oxford. I think uh, Julia is also on the call. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> um, so uh, we're two of the five conveners of the Early Career Researcher uh, SIG. Uh, there's also Angela, Phil Hilda and uh, Tiara who aren't on the call. Um, in terms of our activities, um, uh, we have a few things to mention. There was the first um, Early Career Researcher webinar uh, last month, which was uh, with uh, Dai. Um, we have more plans for uh, seminars coming up, um, and we hopefully we'll be able to say something about those sooner rather than later. Um, we have started to um, conduct interviews with early career researchers, and hopefully you will have seen the first two of these in the uh, last two I hear newsletters. Uh, in fact, no, two of the last three I hear newsletters in July and September. Uh, that's with Marika Cabral and uh, Julia Ferrara. Um, we have the third one of those interviews coming up in the November newsletter. Um, our, one of our key focuses is the um, early career researcher pre-Congress uh, session, I guess mini-conference, if you like, before the Basel meeting uh, next year. Um, the call for abstracts for that went out last month and um, we hope to be able to share more information uh, about our plans for that pre-Congress session in the coming weeks. Uh, in particular, um, we've been talking to the editors of uh, Health Economics about um, a partnership there in, in certain regards. So hopefully we'll be able to share information about that very soon. Uh, and then the final activity to mention is that we're in the process of putting together a database of uh, funding opportunities for early career researchers uh, and again we hope to be able to share information about that in the coming weeks. Um, Julia, did I miss anything? No, uh, no, I think James you were very comprehensive, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not sure if there are any specific challenges as such to mention yet. I guess the only thing 
uh, to perhaps touch on is that at the moment uh, it's been all about us as the five conveners of the uh, of the SIG. Uh, we have um, a growing membership, but we haven't yet worked out how to involve them all in discussions. Um, it might be an element of too many cooks or, or not. Uh, we haven't worked that one out yet. So uh, that's possibly a challenge, um, something to discuss. Yes, but we are we are hoping to meet face-to-face uh, uh, -face when we will be in Basel. So maybe after that, once you meet people and uh, you get to know each other face-to-face, -face, that will help to for the next year probably to have more uh, virtual interactions once you have a, a real one. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Um, if I could now hand over to Heather and Alan. Um. Heather, are you there? Do people hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I don't hear, this is Alan Goodman, I don't hear Heather. She has a much more pleasant voice than I do. Um, let me, so uh, we're involved with the Teaching Health Economics Initiative. And the major initiative, I think we would all agree, is to move the archive uh, that had been in England uh, that had been originally created through uh, Emma Fru and Heather to the IHEA site. And we've gotten lots of help. We've gotten lots of help. Heather just messaged her microphone isn't working, so I'll channel Heather. Uh, anyhow. There, we've gotten lots of help from the people in Toronto because the actual um, connection with the site is so very important. We've been working to try to make it as accessible as we can, and that's certainly a work in progress. Uh, second thing that we're doing right now is that we're planning a half-day pre-conference session with a particular focus on active learning. Uh, some of you may remember, I, I got an email from Florian Buchner who asked, well, why aren't we doing a full day session? And I said, that's a lot of work. Um, but the um, idea about looking at active learning, this is, a, this is a format that worked very, very well at the ASH Econ meetings. And we look forward to introducing it to the rest of the world at Basel. Um, and we are also, and, and particularly for the Teaching Health Economics Initiative, one of the reasons we always used pre-conference sessions was our fear that we would never get anything accepted through the scientific review process. And with the creation of the SIG, um, you know, we're working hard to put together sessions uh, that have to do with teaching health economics to go through the regular scientific review and have regular places uh, on the agenda. Uh, Maya Platt, who can't be on this conference call today, is doing a lot of work on that. Um, you know, so that's that's basically what I have to say. I, if I might, one offer I might make towards the end of life, folks, is that when we've done this at Wayne State, if we outreach to non-economists, we get a lot of very interested uh, uh, feedback on that. So, um, you know, you just, it may be a good idea to try to enlarge circle of friends outside of our little exclusive club. Uh, I don't know whether Heather is hearing all this, but that's where I, what I have to say. Thanks. Thanks very much, Alan. Um, and just to let people know that I wear two hats, actually. I, so I'm, I'm sort of coordinating the call as, as, as the executive director, but I also am a co-convener of the Teaching Health Economics um, SIG. And w one thing that I wanted to encourage everyone on the call to think about is to think about submitting materials that you have that are related to your specific SIG to include in the repository. I think that is 
wants to to increase interest in a particular area like palliative and end of life care is to actually contribute teaching materials and have a teaching materials used in a in a wide range of contexts. Anyway, I won't take up time. We can share inform more information about the repository, but it's online. Um, I want to now hand over to, to Emma. This is the last SIG. And then we going over to I'm going to hand over completely to Nicole. I have heard quite a few people mention issues around social link and engaging members. So I think that Emma might be able to to uh, give us, she's been very engaged with the members of of her SIG. Um, but Nicole might be able to to just speak a bit to the social link issues of communication communicating with members. Over to you, Emma. Hi, can everyone hear me okay? Um, Speak up a little, Emma. Yes. Speak up a little. Okay, so um, is that better? My... Shout, shout. I'm in a shared office, so I can't shout that loud. Oh, sorry, okay. Um, I'll try and speak uh, close to the microphone so you can hear me. Um, so my name is Emma Frew, and I'm at the University of Birmingham in the UK. And as Di mentioned, um, I lead the SIG on obesity, uh, together with my co-conveners, who are John Polly in the States, Michelle Query in Ireland, Alison Hayes in Australia, and uh, Funky Alabfa in uh, Cape Town in South Africa. Now, it's probably worth saying um, that I I invited these people to co-convene the SIG with me because, well, first of all, it was a nice geographical spread across uh, the world, but also because we then had a nice mix of uh, both senior economists and junior economists. Um, and I guess that was with the view that we'd make sure that everyone's needs within the SIG was met. Um, and we've had some really good contributions from those co-conveners in that respect. Um, we ha we are the longest running SIG, so we've been going now for almost a year. So it's about to be our, our first anniversary on the 13th of October. Um, so we have had the opportunity to meet face to face, some of us, and we did that at the European Health Economics Conference. Um, and that was a really informal meeting. Um, it was literally a drink in a hotel bar, and it worked really well because it kept it informal and it meant that. During that meeting, everyone was able to share ideas, and it gave us the opportunity to put a face to name, which then does really help and facilitate these virtual conversations that you have afterwards. Um, I tend to send out monthly emails using the social link email function, um, and I do that just to keep the SIG alive and to keep conversations moving, because otherwise I think sometimes it can go a bit stagnant. Um, and within those monthly emails, I have a, a set structure. So um, I tell everyone about any policy uh, consultations that are coming up. Um, and then I also try to showcase the work of uh, the SIG members. So any papers that have been recently published, any blogs that have been written, then we update all SIG members about that. I also highlight any upcoming conferences, and that's not necessarily just health economics conferences, but obesity conferences more generally. Um, and then if there are any conferences that are about to take place for which we have SIG members attending, I ask that member to summarise the uh, sessions that are relevant to obesity, just to highlight uh, to all SIG members uh, what's happening. So for example, with ASH Econ, John Colley put together a list of all sessions that SIG members might be interested in attending. Um, and then, as well as that, it's about highlighting opportunities for SIG members. So at the moment, we're trying to push uh, our PhD students to think about submitting uh, a paper for the IHEA Student Paper Award. And always within my emails, I invite suggestions from SIG members as to what else is missing, what else would we like to be informed about, um, just to keep the conversation flowing within the SIG. So I find email really helpful. I use email a lot um, through the social link function, but then also 
as a, re as a result of sending that email, I quite often then have group conversations just, um, you know, sort of as a result of that within our SIG. With respect to the policy consultations, this has been an area which I appreciate obesity is something which is very um, relevant from a policy perspective. So we've had lots of opportunity to come together to work as a SIG to contribute to policy. Um, so as a SIG, what we do is, is that we organise ourselves into working groups. And then with uh, capacity development in, development in mind, what we try and do is uh, coordinate who leads that working group to make sure that early career and mid-career researchers have the opportunity to take leadership roles. So for example, um, Victoria Brown at uh, Deakin University in Australia led the working group responding to the Government of Australia inquiry into obesity. Um, so there was about, say, six or seven SIG members that formed that group supporting uh, Victoria in that role. Um, and then she submitted the evidence and actually as a result of that was asked to respond um, and to give um, an evidence orally at a Senate meeting in Australia. So that was a, a really nice example of, I guess, the SIG coming together, we have a much stronger voice in policy terms than us all trying to do it individually. Um, so we have submitted a pre-Congress uh, a, a pre-Congress session proposal to take place before um, the main meeting in Basel. Um, within that, that's going to be hopefully a, an all-day event. We did think about inviting uh, policy people to that pre-Congress meeting, um, but in the end we came to the decision that we wanted it to be about supporting each other and supporting each other in a way that would be, um, you know, sort of to really increase capacity, so it's about giving time to PhD students with work in progress papers, having those papers discussed by senior SIG members, and then also putting ourselves into working groups where we can discuss methodological challenges, small working groups, and that will give us the opportunity to get to know each other on a much deeper level, as well as really explore some of those methodological challenges as a wider, um, as a wider group. I guess in terms of challenges, one of the challenges we're finding, or one of the challenges I'm finding, is around trying to identify sponsors for that pre-Congress session. Um, you know, I do quite a lot of work with surgeons and surgical colleagues, and I find they have absolutely no problem identifying sponsors and are almost like backing them off, whereas I guess economics is not quite so appealing um, for you know, pharmaceutical sponsors, and, and that's something that we're finding a bit challenging is to identify um, financial support for uh, that pre-Congress session. And then like everyone else, we're also having discussions around um, thinking about special organised sessions um, and uh, for, the main, for the main meeting. So I think that's everything. I think that's sort of the main highlights of what we're doing within the state. But as I say, my, my main vision, I guess, is for the SIG, is for it to be about connecting people and to be about increasing capacity so we have a really strong focus for our early career research and inviting SIG members to come forward and to share their papers that have been recently published and to invite comments on that. So to try and get really good detailed dialogue around the sort of research that we're doing and whether we're really shifting forward policy with that research. So it's got a strong policy focus as well in it for the obesity sake. But I think what that does do is it gives us that almost that something tangible for us to come together to work on, um, to share our experiences and to share our research. And I think you really need that some that that tangible thing in order to enable those conversations. So if you can find opportunities for people to work together um, and to, to come together and to share uh, research, then I think that's what works really well within our SIG. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma. That was incredible. I don't know what, what others feel. And I know, you know, each of the um, SIGs is, is, is somewhat different. Um, and, and I think that early career researchers and economic uh, SIGs are, are, um, have a slightly different focus. But I, I wanted to, before handing over to uh, Nicole, 
to talk about social link because clearly we've got to sort out um, a mechanism for people to be able to communicate well and um, so it was useful to hear Emma say she uses the email component of, of social link but in terms of getting discussion going it would be useful to know which element of social link you use and I just want to find out if, if any of the other conveners from other groups have questions for Emma or comments or suggestions or, or anything and then we'll hand over to Nicole around social link. Uh, Emma, I don't know if you can comment on how you um, get discussion going using social link, which functions you use. So I tend to just use the, the email distribution is, so if I click on email all members, that in itself is such a, a positive thing and, and it saves me a lot of time because I used to manage the email distribution list myself and that was really time consuming. So now I'm able to just automatically go in there and I know that that's the most update <coughs> list of members. Um, what I do do is along, like after we have contributed to policy and the working group has produced or generated, uh, synthesized the evidence, we make sure that all these um, contributions are then saved on the social link site so that all SIG members can then go online and they can access that information. Or we had like Michelle Query, for example, she did a blog following the European Health Economics Association conference. So she blogged about all the obesity events that had taken place and we posted that on there, we saved that on there. So I guess what it does is it gives you that bank of resource over time um, to have been documenting all the SIG activities. Great. Any questions, comments? I, I have a question. This is Fern from the Health Preference Research SIG. Um, so is it a choice between going email and then actively copying and pasting it back onto the social link? Because that's my challenge is when you send out an email, the replies don't automatically get posted up on social link. So ideally, when you have a discussion board, you can post something and then people posted up, but they are also notified by email. It seems that it, if you post something, people have to actively go look for it, whereas if you email them, all further communication goes by email, and you'd have to then copy and paste it and put it back if future members want to look at it. Is, am I technically not getting it correct? So maybe either Emma or Nicole, could, maybe Nicole should actually speak to some of the social link issues. Nicole? Yep, so can everybody hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Um, so if you email all members, um, it does go direct to their email inbox. It doesn't really tie back, like each of the responses isn't posted in social link. Um, so I know Emma, for example, uses it as more of like, I, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but it goes out um, as sort of an update on all activities and stuff. Um, it's, if you're looking to generate discussion within social link about a certain topic or a policy paper or um, like a, a session, the best place to do it is to start the discussion in social link. Um, the email and the thread doesn't tie back into the platform. So then we need to email members saying we've started a new list or a new discussion if we want them to know because they won't automatically be told if they haven't, um, depending on their settings, right? Yeah, it depends on your settings and it depends where you post it. So one thing is for forums here, let me just share my screen. That'll probably help because I have it open. Thanks, Nicola. My platform. Well, the call is, oh, there we go. Can you guys uh, see my screen? I, yes, I see it. Okay, good. Um, so this is, I went into groups and then I'll open the health preference research group. Since we're talking about that, for example. Um, 
you guys have probably seen, there's a few places within the group that you can post. So this one that you'll see first is the group feed. So if you post it in the group feed, everybody who is in the group should get that message. Um, it's more specific to if you post in a forum, which I'll pop open, we were talking about. Um, if you post in a forum, for example, someone has to subscribe. So I would have to subscribe to receive notifications from a certain forum. Um, even if even if it's been built by you, if you want to receive all the notifications for it, here, let me actually open the economics of the DC because they have a bunch of forums. So that's a better idea. So you'll see if I scroll down, they have all of their recent activity, their blog activity here, um, as well as the forum activity. So this one, for example, if someone posts a forum, it will show up like this, but you have to subscribe to it. Um, so to receive any of the notifications or anything like that, um, you just you won't receive them or anybody's replies unless you go in and subscribe. And that has to be done by going into each forum, unfortunately. Like there's no math way to subscribe to all of them. You can adjust your subscription settings here at the top if you see. Um, it'll show you what you're subscribed to. So for example, I'm not subscribed to any forums or any topics. This is just my um, can, like my administrative account. Um, but if you are subscribed, then they'll all show up here. And then you can either choose to receive the daily notifications, which would be anytime anyone writes in it, or you would receive the the roundup of everybody, and that comes out either daily or weekly. Um, so I guess the best suggestion I have for the group would be it, if you do want to use the forum, just we have to work on making it explicit to people that they have to subscribe to receive the notifications. Um, to those forums. I don't know if that helps a little bit with like the forum aspect of it. And Nicole, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, certainly for 20th century people like me, if there was some kind of a, you know, short uh, virtual card of options, I think that uh, that would be very useful. In terms of using social link, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just getting like into Facebook and things like that. So it it it. Uh, um, I think that um, I mean there are a lot of people that are much younger than and smarter than I am, but but you know just kind of I guess what they call a cheat sheet or something like that would be very useful. Yeah, so we're working here. I can show you as well. Uh, it's posted online now. So we have um, like some documentation on social link on the website, but also an FAQ page. Um, it's see. not perfect. We're, we're still working on building it, but I think it helps answer some of the questions around um, updating profiles, and it also differentiates between using the desktop and the mobile app as well. The desktop has the most functionality. The mobile app is a bit limited. Um, but it has this, so if I can send this link to everyone after and, and hopefully that will help, but if you have suggestions for things that can be added to it, I've just sort of been adding to it as um, as things have come up that are common um, among groups, but also around just getting in. Um, so all members do have automatic access to social links, like once you log in, that's where you are, uh, but they do have to request to join the group that they want to be a part of. So for basically Social Link 101, we should be posting things into the group feed. Is that right? Yeah, that's I probably think the best place. To yeah, I think if you want people to see it, that's the best place to do it. But also maybe once people in the group get more familiar with um, the different aspects of it, it's like I know Emma, for example, they use the forums to post a lot of like, the policy papers, like something that's more specific, and then. If people want to comment on it within there, they can. Um, it's just a bit tricky because people do have to subscribe, so um, they don't always necessarily know where to find it. Um, it could also be, I don't know, if 
Emma finds that sending out the notice to people about what's been going on helps a bit because then they know that there's an activity and that they can log in and look. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard. It's not as intuitive in some parts that we'd like it to be. We, it's a software that the website company builds, so there's definitely limitations. So I think just trying to find the best way to, to work around them and with them to, to sort of get people used to using it. It's Emma here. I think if I'm honest, I do send out by email a note to everyone um, and everything that's saved on the B2P forum site is also sent out by email as well because I work on the basis that people don't access the site. I don't think people find it that easy to access and therefore I do make sure that everything's on there but I don't assume that people go on there to look for it. That's really helpful to know. I think um, I'm, I'm looking at the the time. Um, I, I, you know, I think that uh, Nicole and, and Natalie have prepared a whole lot of information on on social link, but I think that we should, uh, as, as Ellen suggested, a cheat sheet, a very short uh, so a guide for conveners of the best things to do and how to do it. Um, but also possibly a message that should be sent out to members of SIGS and each new member when they join about how to set up their preferences so that they are kept in the loop. I think that that would be helpful. Um, yeah, I can always, what I can do is draft a message about that maybe is a bit generic that and pass it along to the state conveners and they could share it with the, the members through social link perhaps, like something that just highlights all of the settings and how to use that kind of thing. Yeah. That would be a good idea. Sure, I can do that. Okay. Um, and maybe we could get Emma to, to check that those are the kinds of things that, that she's doing. You know, just, just work with Emma on that. I, I don't know if you quickly want to say anything about webinars. Um, well, I think um, everyone chatted a bit about them when they did their intros, which was good. Um, I think this point was just sort of to remind people that um, the option is open and encouraged for all six to hold webinars. Um, it's not mandatory, and I know a lot of things are still getting off the ground. Um, we did do the ECR SIG webinar, which was really great, um, just in September, and I think that went really well um, in terms of organization and the attendance. Um, I think there was about 50 people that attended and registered. Um, I don't know if the ECR SIG wants to speak to it, but it was just um, by way of encouraging people to, to keep webinars in mind, and, and we can work with them to schedule them. Um, as that's also a good way to probably draw more people into the site if they're looking to increase membership, like a couple people talked about. Thanks, Nicole. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm worried about time because I know we'd set this up for an hour. I think that we'll, we'll type up some minutes, uh, well, notes from this, and hopefully we, you know, it would uh, stimulate some ideas that other, you know, that six up on. We'll also get more information together on on social link because I think one of the when preparing the the table and the background text for the quarterly report, uh, um, David Bishai uh, circulated to everyone. It was one of the things that was clear is that a lot of the SIGs are working very hard behind the scenes and the conveners are having a lot of engagement, but engaging with members um, in an active way is, is possibly lagging behind. And so we've got to crack the nuts around social link and how to engage easily. And I think that will just make it so much um, more feasible for SIGs to be much more active. Uh, I, Emma, I will be in touch with SIG conveners um, around 
for support for, for pre-Congress sessions. And trying to raise funds is something that I'm working on at the moment. Um, but just to say, please, I, I don't know if part of this, this um, WebEx meeting was just introducing ourselves and, and the activities that we engage in. Uh, but would it be useful to have further um, meetings of SIG conveners in future after a couple of months or so to, to just focus more on sharing ideas? And um, you don't all have to respond now. You could live via email. Um, and, and also just to note that if you would like to, I think it was very clear from from what Emma said that, and and others said as well, that face to face things are incredibly valuable. But I know that some of the SIGs, uh, I know that the end of my Ketik had a, a WebEx meeting of its members. So to just spend an hour or so, an hour or two, get, you know, introducing each other, working out what's what. Uh, different projects people are working on, brainstorming ideas for activities of the SIG, etc. Um, always happy to to set up webinars for your, sorry, not webinars, but meetings, just for your members to to share ideas and and chat. Um, I don't know if there any other thing would like to fix any issues from your side, Nicole. Um, no, nothing else on my end right now. Um, I just saw uh, for his message around push notifications. So in the mobile app, you can you can play with your push notification settings. The desktop version of social it doesn't really have um, like a push notification function. Um, I can follow up with your membership. They are the ones who build and own the social link platform to see if um, I mean they always take suggestions. It doesn't. They don't necessarily put them into action, but I can always follow up and, and let them know more so about like our concerns with using the platform and, and see what updates they can make in the near future. Thank you. It sounds almost like a Facebook page would be almost more interactive in that way. So hopefully we can bring those two technologies together that it it uh, it, it can provide not not have two parallel universes email and what's on the web, web board. So thank you very much. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Okay, I don't want to take up more of your time. Uh, clearly, we've got a lot of work to do in relation to to social links. Um, and if it's yeah, we so, so I think that we must also speak to to your membership, which is basically the platform, the web uh, the website platform that we use. So, I think we we need to ensure that they actually are able to deliver on being able to connect people and network, because that was the idea uh, behind um, Social Link. Um, but please, so I, I, yeah, please be in touch with Nicole or myself or Natalie at any stage for any support. Um, send us an email. So we've, we've circulated some notes from this. Uh, with suggestions on how, uh, you know, whether it makes sense to have more regular engagements between the conveners of SIGs to to have a, a learning community around uh, running SIGs. Um, uh, this is, this yeah. is Alan. I, I would add that the folks in Toronto have been very, very responsive, and I'm I'm very, very grateful for uh, uh, the you know, to be able to be in touch with them. And I think that to a certain extent, uh, you know, we're we're frustrated because we're moving so quickly and sometimes things don't always 
move it smoothly. So I think we should do at least a qualified pat on the back for ourselves and for the uh, Toronto folks. Great. Thank you, everyone. And once again, we are mostly grateful for all the time and efforts that, that everyone has put into these six. It is a very exciting initiative. And yeah, I'm very happy. Okay. okay. No. Thanks, Di. And Nicole. No. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank Di, Nicole. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a you know great learning session in action. Now look forward to have our discussion in the coming week. Yes, I'll I'll follow up to schedule that with you guys via yeah. email. Oh, uh,